This is David Kruzma with Hub Culture and the World Climate Summit. I'm joined by Peter Boyd, the COO of the Carbon War Room. Thanks for joining us. Oh, nice to be here. Can you tell me what it is that the Carbon War Room does? Uh, Carbon War Room is a global nonprofit focused on entrepreneurial solutions to climate change. So we're basically looking for places where we can make money and save CO2 at the same time. Fantastic. And you told me just before we started filming that you have a, an announcement to make in, about an achievement in the shipping industry. Yep. So you know, tomorrow morning, as you can see, it's getting dark now. So tomorrow morning, uh, we're going live with a brand new data hub uh, for the shipping industry, which is basically um, completely exposing the information about the efficiency of the, the vessels, whether they're a clean ship or a dirty ship. So why would a uh, ship owner put all the nice technologies on their ship if the market doesn't appreciate it? Hmm. Um, why And how can a buyer like we were just talking about Nike, how can a buyer like Nike choose the more efficient vessels if they don't, they don't know that they're not being signaled? So wouldn't an economist though say that you don't need to know that information because it would be embedded in, in the price of shipping the vessel, like more, more efficient vessels would be cheaper and so you wouldn't need to know the efficiency of it? Um, it, it's more complicated than that for a couple of reasons. One is because you can't actually just know, you know, sort of what's happening with it uh, in terms of how clean or dirty it is. Um, there's a headline price for the ship and then there's a fuel price. And, and in the shipping industry, 70% of the fuel is passed on to the shipper. So you've got a complex mixture of price signals in terms of it might be a lower day rate for an older ship, but then you'll get more fuel. And there's just one big bill paid for by Nike at the end. And it's just very hard with imperfect information moving around the marketplace at the moment to say, well, what are the cleanest ships in the fleet? Over the long term, the cleanest ships should also be the cheapest. So it's not just a way to let them know about what's greenness, it's actually helping them make better business decisions. Absolutely. It's, 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 about, it's about basically making better business decisions across the whole industry. We want Nike and, and, and Ikea to be able to pick the cleanest fleet for a long-term saving of cost that they can pass to their customers and green their supply chain. And then for the best um, ship, ship owners in the world, uh, we want them to be able to display we're better than the competition. So how did you convince these shippers to come to the table on this issue? Um, so the, the, on, the, on the ship owning side, so the guys that own the ships, uh -huh. we've actually accessed an international ship registry database and used the IMO's own formula it's to calculate publicly the design. available information. Yeah, yeah the, the, so, so the IMO's design index. We've calculated this design index. What we've done differently though is said we've calculated it, we've estimated it for the whole fleet, over 60,000 vessels, so the, of the large ocean going vessels. Um, and then we put it on an A to G scale rating, much like a fridge freezer uh, in, in Europe. Uh, hmm. A to G, A is the cleanest, G is the dirtiest, and, and, and D is in the middle. And we put that, effectively estimated that for the whole world's fleet. The ship owners haven't yet put much of the data in, but they can verify their data, they can register improvements they've made to the ship, and they can, get, they can work their, their ratings up. This is, this is very, very exciting news, um, and I, I understand what you're saying by correcting an inefficiency in the market because there's imperfect information. Are you planning to do something similar in other industries? Yes, we are. I mean, so, so, so you go to take, I think it's very important on these industries to say, well, where's the market failure? Where is the block to capital? Mm -hmm. And where are the co-benefits that you might be able to unlock and get the market moving? And the great thing about the shipping industry is that the, there's money to be made by making them more efficient, and then you also save the CO2. In other industries, uh, the market failure might be different. So we're not promising a rating on every industry we touch, because mm -hmm. some either have it already, and some that's just not the problem. Problem. But what we are doing is we're committed to going around the industries in climate change. We've identified 25 sectors and we're going around them and looking for where are the places where a gigaton of CO2 can be taken out and money can be made at the same time. It's a capital opportunity for entrepreneurs and capital to move in to, to accelerate the market to solving this issue. And, and my impression from this issue is that the biggest market failure is that there's no price on carbon um, and that, that lowers investment in renewables. However, there's other market failures. How many of those other market failures can you address through what you're doing? Basically, we think, I mean, if you take uh, the McKinsey cost curve as a, pr as a, as right. a, as a principle, um, there's about half of, you know, of, of, of the emissions uh, em reductions opportunities on the left side of the cost curve, basically negative cost. They, they make things money that, right now. Things that make money and make money right why now. aren't we doing them? Why aren't we doing them? Right. There's a the right side, you know, obviously they cost a certain amount per ton of CO2, but they, you know, they should be done if we want to mitigate the carbon. Right. Um, what we're doing is we're saying that let's concentrate as carbon worm on the half that make money right now. Why are they on the cost curve at all? Why aren't they things that actually the industries have done? 
And that doesn't depend on a price on carbon at all. We think there's, there's a lot of sectors out there. It's purely people who can make money and get a more efficient industry based on the current policy and the current technology. Thanks again, Peter. I'm David Kreutzma with Hub Culture, joined by Peter Boyd, the COO of the Carbon War Room. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks.